Emp, we got another fantastic series coming at you right now. Uh, yeah, I think probably everyone would say this is the premiere series of today. <clears throat> oh! Uh, lo- what? Yes! Oh, I'm just sorry. I got ahead of myself. Go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Lions Esports versus TTES. Uh, teams with a little bit of a rivalry back and forth, too. I know uh, there was a time where Lions wound up taking a walkover win, I believe, from over TTS because they were yes. late again. And then TTS came back and smashed them, and then Lions smashed them in response. And a little bit of blood between these teams, and uh, definitely looking forward to this match off. Yeah, it's very evenly matched as well. I mean, Lions Esports Club has shown us in the last week that they are a force to be reckoned with and uh, definitely edging out their opponents. But uh, TT Esports, since they've had their kind of roster shakeup about two months ago, seems like they've just been getting stronger and stronger. Some people, including myself, kind of discounted them like real early on, but they've been impressive lately and definitely in shape to really give Lions a run for their money, if not take this series. So looking forward to this one. I mean, uh, something else that you brought up, these two teams, probably the two favored teams to get in that fourth uh, fourth spot to Vegas. These are two of the most favored teams in that playoff, the eight-man tournament. And this is a little bit of a preview right here. Yeah, it is a preview match indeed. Uh, I'd also throw up teams like Excellent and Afraid, may be able to make a splash and surprise people and qualify as well on top of qsq you cannot discount them even though we do not see them in diamond this cycle yep gonna be very fun i mean you also got absolute legends in there yeah and yeah. uh speaking of them i think their match against pikachu True. is still going on right now um god that eight team tournament emperor is gonna be so good yeah <laughs> i'm like just thinking about it right now i'm like holy crap that's Gonna be incredible. Anyway, Emperor, there's already some awesome stuff going on in this game. War Beast and Kinesis were blind banned here by the Legion team. Parasite and Moon Queen on the other side. But what I'm really interested in, well, I'm kind of interested in that War Beast blind ban, actually. Oh, Troll plays it. Yeah, Troll plays it quite a bit. He, he he does love the hero on top of Legion Air in the jungle. I don't know if they've been screaming with it lately or what, but yeah, Parasite Moon Queen sort of speaks for itself there. No Wild Soul, but who actually banned it out here? Let me go scrolling down. Okay, TTS winds up banned. I'll you go over the bands here, Beef, and the yeah. locks. Well, the locks, I mean, that's something to look at for sure. Aluna, Keeper of the Forest, Tempest, Devourer, Monkey King, and Ophelia. So three of the strongest junglers in the game locked up, as well as two heroes that Lions has used to great effect in the past few yes, weeks yes. with Devourer and Monkey King. Really, really exciting lock pool right there with those two heroes. Yeah, for sure. And Aluna actually looking like a little bit more of a ban in that lock pool just because of the fact that Keeper and Tempest are both on the board on top of Ophelia and different gank options for both teams. Yep, liking it, liking it. Now the bans were, of course, Draconis, Wild Soul, Master of Arms, Fade, Nymphora, and Jeraziah. So getting rid of, uh, well, a couple of those carries, the Suicide Hero there with Master of Arms, and then uh, Fade, Nymphora, Jeraziah. Just annoying, annoying heroes in general. But the first pick coming out was Wretched Hag from Lions. Of course, Flensmeister, extremely, extremely well known for his Wretched Hag play. Uh, makes sense that they'd want to pick that one up first. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the, the bands here. I'm not sure. Like the Fade and the Jared Zyman is nice, and I guess they can't ban everything. But no engineer pick. Oh, let's see where they grabbed it. Rally engineer, Wretched Hag first. So. Choosing Glacius over Engineer when they know they have all the makings of their strategy now. They got that Bubbles or the Hag right there. They have the Rally and they have the Engineer. They set up for the Devo. So that means, A, they want them to get Devo and they don't care. Um, ooh, the Artillery. But yeah, A, they want them to get Artillery, and uh, I mean uh, Devo, and they don't care. Or B, they just weren't being perceptive enough to sort of throw in little uh, road bumps there for their lineup. Yeah, interesting, interesting. The Artillery for sure. But uh, Keeper of the Forest going to be first picked here by Lions, leaving Tempest Ophelia for the TT Esports team. And, of course, picked that one up right away. Uh, Trouf going to be playing that Ophelia and leaves Jeppins to actually play the Tempest in the suicide role. Now, Lions Esports Club has the possibility to run maybe the rally in that suicide position, if that's something they're looking like, and then pick up something like the Devo Engineer mate, mid lane, like you'd mentioned. Um, I don't know. What do you think? What are you seeing here? 
I mean, just the base on the fact that they have that that rally in the engineer. We've seen that surround the Devo pick a lot, but they've also been picking a lot of Monkey King lately. Um, pretty difficult to say. My my gut instinct says Devo, but it, it isn't for certain. And maybe they feel like this isn't the ideal Devo game. I'm not sure. There is no Philia, and that might be rough. It could be indeed. Of course, those minions blocking hooks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, same. End up going with the Monkey King. So gonna hand that one over to Super KGE. Run that with the engineer in the middle lane and then of course keep it the forest going to be going suicide rather than jungle now leaving wretched hag there in the bottom lane i i like this lions team man uh it's gonna be very very exciting excuse me there is gonna be rally actually hitting the suicide lane keeper the forest will be jungle sorry yeah for sure with Hans that. Playing. yeah it's whatever the uh no emperor i'm sorry man i'm sorry <laughs> Not good enough. I'm sorry. Not oh, yeah. good enough. Come on, please don't uh, hit me. Things I like to point out: <laughs> Deadwood versus Rally. Uh, sometimes if Deadwood gets that rotten grasp off, not sometimes. If he does get it off, you can actually compel targets that are affected by that rotten grasp. So it sets up for an easy punch. Uh, a lot of mobility there with the Monkey King and Rally. Uh, I also like Monkey King sometimes with Engineer. They get right on the edge of the energy field. You're flicking them in and out, back and forth, and they're just taking tons of damage and disable. Yep, it can be quite fun. Now on the other team. TT Esports does have the Glacius as well as that Deadwood. Going to be running that mid lane most likely. And Heimer actually running into the bottom lane right now. So they will be running a suicide artillery? Wait, what? No. No. Oh. No. Okay. Why was he heading down there? Okay. He is going to head top, so it makes much more sense. It's a suicide yeah. tempest. I don't know. Heimer just confused the hell out of me. Yeah, he might actually. Is he going mid? No, he's got a ring of protection right now. Now, if you do run the artillery mid and then put uh, tree versus tree up top, I mean, Deadwood, by most people, favored in that situation, whereas the artillery probably going to have a pretty good time up there as well, but perhaps the artillery, maybe they're feeling it's a little bit stronger against the Monkey King, not having to close yeah. in that distance and be afraid of all the burst damage from the Monkey King Engineer. Yeah, the Glacius Artillery Lane is actually pretty damn strong if they do opt to go for it. We see a lot of movement back and forth. Now they've been scouted out. Rally, are they? Okay, no, he's just he's trying to, I don't know. Uh, LRM used, uh, just not a big deal. They're just trying to mitigate the effectiveness of this animated tree pull here. Yeah, we'll get that one uh, back. A pretty pretty effective pull right here by Hans Kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to work. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was talking about that, that, that rally versus deadwood combination. We talked with a level six that would definitely has the advantage there. And especially with the Ophelia anchor, it's it's gonna be a little bit tougher for Rally. He can hold his own in CS for a bit, but Deadwood does overtake the lane eventually. Yeah. But the yeah. Uh, the artillery glacier is also tons of strong dual range harass. So I actually do like that lane assignment coming out. Yeah, TT Esports definitely uh taking advantage of the opportunities that they're being given right here and then of course the wretched hag versus tempest matchup in the bottom is certainly one to watch out for but with the stacked regen that leon black has actually provided to jeppins i feel like tempest is actually gonna have a pretty good time in this lane yeah uh jeppins very strong suicide player in general um tempest is not his favorite by far yeah um it's not one that we see for sure. And Emperor, I, I've just got to point out here for a second. How many of these players are on your fantasy team? I have Tralf and I have Jeppins. Jeppins? Two. So two. And I have Super KJE, which KGE. Why do I always say KJE? I, I say it sometimes too. And, well, well, this is pretty not good for me to see two of my uh, teams of players going against each other. No, no, that's not the worst. Just scoped out the brackets. It's not the worst thing in the world. The brackets weren't released when we drafted yesterday. No, I know. Uh, I've of course got Seal Kid and Flensmeister over here on the other team. Um, so we're gonna have to take a look and, and see how these players are doing, man. Because this, this could be one of the pivotal matchups for our first cycle of uh, Han Fantasy, Fantasy Han. Well, yeah, and well, my my player in Enso last match already sort of took a little beating there. Yeah, did not did. have the best of times. They were pretty rough games there for even all over all day. Moon Queen second game. They overall just looked like afraid was just on another level in that matchup. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, uh, the Europeans they 
are very new. Like the the lineup that they're using, of course, replacing Relo and Zet Pro with uh, Shams and Enzo. Mm -hmm. So definitely going to get some time. Um, need some time to get used to it. But I'm sure we'll see them practicing here pretty soon. Now taking a look here in the middle lane at uh, the CS situation. Monkey King currently at eight and two, as opposed to the seven and two of artillery. So keeping relatively even, but the uh, damage potential coming out of this artillery pretty high. Speaking of damage, though, Ratchet Hag with forty-five percent of the damage done in this game so far. Yeah, just obviously laying out that. Oh well, yeah, a lot of that harass there onto the Tempest. Uh, Tempest is trying to lane control as well as possible. And taking a look at the creep farm between that matchup, Tempest is actually yeah, not enough the damage, but controlling the creeps all he needs to do mm -hmm. now this uh artillery here in the middle lane pure physical damage right on the lrm and on the auto attacks the only magic damage he has is that uh the ultimate the artillery barrage monkey king starts out with extremely high armor of course right now level three sitting on 5.7 armor I just watched him tank like a full LRM and really not take that much damage. It's uh, <laughs> maybe another reason that they decided to put the Monkey King in this lane. Uh, I feel like they would. Maybe. I feel like the, the lane of science made the most sense anyway for him, though. Uh, well, I mean. It, it is something nice, though. It is. You mean over the Devo? Yeah, over the Devo. Okay. Yeah, and that and the, and the, the Ophelia and just probably the lineup in general. It's funny, a little more carry coming on. It's true, though. Maybe so. Uh, Keeper getting a nice regeneration right here. Can he use his? There it is. There it is. Just make nice. sure he gets those animated trees off before it uh, hits the full regen. Because once you do the regen rune, obviously uh, it takes itself off. So. Oh, Monkey King in the middle lane. Going to be using the vault right there. The dashing strike, only one going off. LRM return fire coming out of artillery. He's uh, barreling down the field right there. And... There was actually something I was going to say. Ophelia actually doing a very good job. Le leveling pretty damn even with Keeper of the Forest at this point. Trouf, I sometimes we see him have kind of a slow start on Ophelia. Not one of those games, though. Um, I mean, all Ophelia players, really, they can just have a slow start. But hits level 5 right here. Has the boots. Grabs a Talisman of the Exile. Working his way toward that Ring of Sorcery. And, and he's keeping pace with Keeper of the Forest, which is hard to do as Ophelia. Yeah, um, definitely just focusing on leveling up this game, not running the ganks. He has very strong lane setups to begin with. Uh, Tempest performing very well against Wretched Hag, their mid lane uh, being pretty strong, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Monkey King. And, well, I like Deadwood in that versus Rally matchup. We can see right here, 30, 15. I mean, all their lanes are winning or at least equal without his help. So he's able to just sit here and focus on farming and getting those levels. So, yeah, he's doing a good job. Yeah, he is. So... Uh, rally up in the top lane. How's he doing against this uh, Deadwood yeah. rally with the battle experience? I mean, he hits pretty damn hard, 12 and 3 right now. But Deadwood with that hatchet and with the uh, log that he picks up, sitting on 33 and 18. A very, very large lead from Ravis. Yep, and now he's level 6, and the threat of the ultimate combo alone is enough to scare Rally. Meanwhile,. Ophelia, we'll see if Trolf chooses to do this, but he can always go behind the tower and set up the gank if you get something like a Skeleton King Minotaur combination. I uh, can set up the gank, and the, the powerful thing about rallying in the side lane with a pusher like Ophelia, you get the kill, the burst here like Deadwood sets up the kill, and then you push down the tower. Ooh, Glacius. Run on up, nothing happening. Yeah, he's got that haste room, but unfortunately not able to set anything up, leaving Monkey King in the middle lane to fend for himself. And it looks like Super KGE actually going to retreat back to town, go fill up that bottle, using the vault and the one chin slam right there to actually traverse a pretty great amount of distance and speed his set back home as Bloodlust in the top lane. That's what you're talking about. Willowmaker plus the Rotten Grass combo right there, and down goes Rally. Doesn't matter that he's got 800 life and 5 armor. Deadwood just... Says, see ya. Mm -hmm. I actually like this. We talked uh, when I when I saw the artillery before played by played by Team Afraid. They were very aggressive in pushing with early using this early using that LRM spam. Ooh. Ooh, Monkey King in the middle lane right here. The keeper, the force ultimate use. Ophelia gets her ult off though. The LRM is there. Ophelia will go down. Compel gonna miss there from Krebson though. In the end, they end up getting the deny. Will they actually get one of these creeps as well? possible the keg and a whiff the auto attack damage from monkey king appears to be enough though 
Oh, I'm going to end up sending Monkey King back to base. Oh, he might be in a little bit of trouble. The Minotaur stun going to be canceled right there. And Monkey King chugging the bottle. I was just stunned out of the Minotaur. That was close. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah I was going to go heal with it. So, yeah. Uh... Oh, top lane. Deadwood taking a lot of damage right there from the <clears throat> Compel Seismic Slam at a rally. But with the two-level advantage, Deadwood not too afraid. Yeah. The, the, the mid was going great, actually. They were doing fantastic. Uh, the LRM combined with uh, the brute force push from Ophelia, just applying a lot of pressure, but they brought the numbers. They had four versus three there in the mid lane, overrun them, and it, it was you know, it was huge, because even though they brought the numbers, they did get the kill. Uh, it was not a waste of time at all, and also sealed the deny, so a great job coming out, great response from Lions. They had plus one sitting there from DTS, maybe a Tempest that picked up an earlier uh, homecoming zone, and Warp to the middle lane was able to turn that around. That could have been huge. Yeah, speaking of Tempest there in that bottom lane, 30 and 12 CS as opposed to the 34 and 18. So, I mean, uh, this is one of the better performances I've seen out of a Suicide Tempest in quite a while. Jeppins, you mentioned that might not even be uh, one of his favorite heroes to play, but uh, he's kicking ass down here in this bottom lane. Yeah, he definitely is. Right now we see him, he's got his Ring of Sorcery very, very early, so just able to pretty much endlessly spam those elementals. Uh, makes the lane control that much easier. Yeah, the Ring of Sorcery really does help out, and speaking of helping out, I mean, Monkey King in the middle lane has a double damage. You need somebody to actually assist him to set up a kill here. That person might be Keeper of the Forest, as Hanskin is, well... He's keeping down in the forest, but uh, now going to be heading over toward the middle lane, perhaps, and Glacius may be out of position right here. The root could come in, and there it is, Monkey King, and, and you're going to be there. Monkey King comes on in with the fault, and down it goes. Ophelia heal, a little bit too too late. Yeah, and even with it, Monkey King was still going to easily drop him there. He still had the elusive dash and the double damage, so obviously that proccing to the elusive dash, it just would not have Give him much hope for Glacius to survive. Meanwhile, I do not like the fact that Jeffins does not have a homecoming zone yet. If something were to happen, that I, I just don't like it. I don't like seeing your suicide hero uh, sort of rooted down like that. Look at Rally on the other side of the map. He's got one. The the courier was sitting in base, not being used for a while. Obviously in top lane now, yeah. but yeah, I would I would definitely just like to see it. Yeah, I could agree with you in, uh, in that assessment. As Deadwood and Ophelia going to be pushing down the top tower. No defense whatsoever from the Legion team. Lions instead going to be making their way into the middle lane where they're going to try to knock down the opposing team's deep through one tower. And Glacius is there. Deadwood going to drop the Rotten Grass. There's the auto attack damage and the Willowmaker coming in. The Compel on to Keeper of the Forest. He's going to get away for now, so... Just a little bit too tanky right there. Does put an end to the push, but Keeper of the Forest will survive. Right. Well, there's only the two of them right there. No additional follow-up damage. Artillery is cleaning up stacks, so... Uh, just trying to get his farm a little bit pushed up here. Actually, definitely taking over Monkey King after this. He's throwing two dragons right here. Should be about 320, 330 after he's done. Yeah. Directly in between, Emperor. Directly in between. I was laying out the average. You're, you're, you're pretty range. good, man. You're pretty good. Why didn't you just say uh, 325? 325. There you go. I was giving you the range. I know. I, oh. I appreciate it, Emperor. I appreciate you, Emperor. Thank you. We're good. We're good. Um, uh, so this Deadwood just crushing in terms of gold per minute right now. What's up at about 420 uh, after an extremely strong start in that top lane? Keeper of the Forest, I mean, he had a pretty good time as well, but just not nearly as strong as this Deadwood. And Lions Esports Club, I mean, in general, 11 minutes in here, 3,000 gold deficit. Um, yeah, falling behind early. Yeah. And Jeffins, he's saving up. I, I don't know if he's going to go that build up route at all. I don't. I think of Jeffins, I don't think of build up route either. <laughs> it's usually. You just like think so of Mock of Brilliance. <laughs> I think of Mock of Brilliance. Now we'll see right here. Uh, probably going to pick up. There's, There's the homecoming boots. zone. There's the homecoming nice. zone. Nice. Nice. That's all I wanted. Uh, well boots. done, Jeffins. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay, Steam Boots, I approve of. So, yeah, it is tanking up here. Big and, uh, zone. yeah, CT Esports gathering up in the bottom lane to knock down their third tower of the game. 
while well, Lions once again going to make a little bit of a response toward the middle. Um, also making sure to farm up the top lane where Rally picks up a mana battery and uh, trying to put some damage into that tower perhaps. But TP support is going to be coming in here and Artillery showing the power of those long range missiles. It all makes sense now. That's what LRM stands for. I, you know... No, obviously, but the, the fact that they pierce them, I don't always think of them as missiles, you know? it's I don't know. Like, a missile is like anything that's in a projectile flight, right? Not necessarily okay, like that's, a that's explosive true. missile. No, that is true. You think of missile and you... No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Sure. But I don't know. That's what it stands for, right? Like, I thought it says that somewhere as as on the I'm, tooltip. I'm pretty sure it's what it stands for. I think so. Get fire as, missile. Uh, oh, Deadwood into trouble. Monkey King going to come on in here, but the LRM is the covering right now. Artillery Barrage goes in, misses, though. Deadwood gets the Willowmaker off, but inside of the energy field, he will find his final resting place. Get the freeze right there onto Keeper of the Forest, and the LRM going to be going in there, providing additional slow. Keeper invis, though. And Tempest making his way on up. Going to drop a Meteor? No. Doesn't have any points in it. As Keeper of the Forest once again applying pressure onto the tower. There are three people up here. <laughs> Rally going to be trying to cut a way out. Uh, and they will be able to S2 their way through these cliffs no. and get on out of there. The trees. They, they cut trees. They cut trees. Well, they, they kind of push their way through and then cut some trees. Okay. Okay. Alright. You know what? You win. I, no, you win. No, I, no. I concede defeat. Emperor. Are, you, are you sure? Did they, did uh, they... I, I don't know. I think they might have pushed their way through one tree. Okay. I'm just looking. I'm Look sure. at this elemental. It's going. Look at the elemental. It's traveling. It's traveling all, right, all, all right, the you way win. through. You, all right, you win. See? Yes. Damn it, Emperor. That's what it's all about. In I, I, it's not about... It's just about making your co-caster look like a fool? No. Not... Wow. Emperor, come on. <sighs> hey, okay, listen. We got... Uh... The artillery here is still farming 326 gold per minute. Monkey King uh, is adversary in lane only at 240. Ophelia surprisingly edging out Keeper of the Forest this game as well. So uh, no kills yet. Uh, no, no assists, no kills. Just uh, doing the tower push thing, doing the farm up thing. And uh, already building up pretty damn quickly. Yeah, I, it's Ophelia definitely farming well. It shows... I mean, just how effectively an Ophelia can farm if you really aren't trying to put those ganks in. And we typically think of Ophelia as an effective gank and a hero that needs to be ganking. But, I mean, Trowel showing us right now that just the pushing potential of the Ophelia and getting some stronger items in that early lane or that early game phase, pretty damn strong. Right, Maul opens up room. We don't have to see the astrolabe route on uh, something like a Tempest this game, given the fact that our uh, that our Oph that Ophelia is getting it. Uh, opens up the route for potential barrier idol, but more likely than not, we're going to see the portal key. Hmm. Actually, is... not to say more likely than not because Jevons is crazy. <laughs> He's wild, right? You might go for something crazy, like completely and totally off the wall. What what would you think that would be a possibility? I I'm not even gonna throw anything okay. out there. All right, I can. I got you. Is it... Uh, well, the Legion team looking they... to respond. They're they're not going for this defense. I mean, artillery has to be careful here. He knows his team's not there. Just... No, no, no! What are you doing? Oh, the compel gonna miss there from Krebson. A rare mistake coming out of uh, Krebson right there. Um, on what would have been an assured kill on your enemy team's 350 GPM carry. Uh, definitely unfortunate, but weren't able to quite secure that. Do take home the consolation prize that is the tower. And, of course, evening up that uh, gold lead a little bit more. Still down by about 2,500 gold, but the experience lead at this point even slightly in their favor. Looking at this Nelson artillery, it's still a very powerful tool in how fast it helps him farm. Uh, it can mitigate the haunt, the ultimate health flower coming out, coming from Richard Hag, and something like a Monkey King's Heavenly Vault. Okay, we got 2160 now finished by Tempest. Not. He's going to the side chop. He's going to the side, going chop. To the side like... chop. He's going it's for like... an Arcana. What? No. Oh, damn. <laughs> Gets the portal key there, so we'll uh, opt for the initiation route rather than the support route. Going to leave that for the Ophelia to finish up her astrolabe here very shortly. 
And uh, yeah, both these teams just kind of sitting back and farming at this stage. It's kind of odd. Yeah. I think about both these teams, and I think about at least TT Esports being consistently aggressive, and Lions Esports Club um, aggressive most of the time. So to have only five hero kills at 17 minutes into the game, uh, it really shows how much they're respecting the other team right now, but not really going for those big overextensions, those big dives, just saying, hey, we need to play this safe. The other team can really take it to us if we give them the opportunity. Uh, middle tower is still up for for Hellborn too, so they have all the outer towers coming out. They have their middle tower left, and there's been a lot of harass on that. It's down to half health right now. Uh, they have to be careful. They, they, you know what? Deadwood had a very or early portal key, so pushing those towers in combination with the LRM and uh, a Hellborn team that had a pretty sound start was not, you know, the safest thing to do. Yeah, it could have been quite dangerous indeed, but artillery, I mean, showing the power right now uh, of this hero. But Hanskin getting quite annoying himself. He could be in a little bit of trouble here. Glacius doesn't have any revelation or anything, though. So it looks like Hanskin will be able to just walk right away. Now the Ward of Revelation is... No, that's a Ward of Sight. Hard to tell, hard to tell. But, uh... <laughs> oh, bottom lane, Wretched Hag gonna take the Willow Maker and down goes Flensmeister. The <laughs> double portal key action from TT oh, Esports. Did you... <laughs> you were blessing. Did you see that? That was funny. What? Flensmeister getting very close, obviously, to his, uh, Hellflower. He, he's, he goes to the side shop, he starts... Putting down his items, buying the life tube just to, to heal up really quickly. He's buying a life tube and selling it, buying a life tube and selling it just to top off his health, right? And then he just leaves and goes to the lane and dies. Anyway, <laughs> despite... No, I didn't see that part. Okay. As uh, mid lane, Ophelia gonna lose one of her minions right here. Monkey King was trying hard. There's the pin inside of the Rotten Grass. No! Wasn't in the Rotten Grass. Glacial Blast go out. Big compel though! Monkey King looks like he's going to be able to get away. Stun is still there. There's the Oak Bolt as well. Deafening Roar turns Moravis right on around. Yeah, had so. the Rotten Grass pit, it would have been a Deafening Kill. Uh, just not coordinating quite right with that Skeleton King. The net coming out from Trout, and unfortunately, not going to get the kill there. It was otherwise pretty free looking. Yeah, I, I like the thought there from Trout trying to... Uh, trap him so that the rotten grass would land 100% of the time, but like yeah. you said, just uh, a little bit un miscoordinated, and in the end, Monkey King does end up escaping. I mean, it was so close that I actually thought was. he was in it. Right, um, he uses on the edge, so. Hanskin? Hanskin in some trouble? No. Yeah, he just used his root on the, the creep wave by accident, oh. and then right there was Deadwood watching the entire thing, so he's like, okay... Well, I'm, I'm going to go punch you in the do. face. Yeah, Hanskin accidentally... Uh... And will TT Esports look to capitalize on this by mounting a little Shut bit it. of a push? Already we have Ophelia and Glacius uh, mounting up here in the middle lane. Artillery with the Nullstone finished, looking to join them perhaps. But uh, Deadwood and Tempest just farming for now. Maybe not. Looks like they're just going to... Oh, they're going to capitalize for the Congor. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, no root. That's a big deal. Hanskin's got to be... Man, he is not having the best of luck lately. No. <laughs> Cocaine's poor a health guy. drug. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, yeah, poor guy. I mean, of course, after dropping the Alchemist Bones there in game number two of the uh, Complexity vs. Lions Soundbuster Heroes League Finals... Not having a good time indeed. Congor does go down quite quickly. And Tempest looking for somebody to catch in the top lane. Not going to find anybody just yet, though. And what did Moravis just pick up? Soul's Bulwark? I don't know. He just spent about uh, 2,700 gold. What? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Soul's Bulwark would be a really good guess, but Souls. he's going for that shrunken route. Maybe. Given the fact that they have an engineer and a keeper. So something around those lines. We'll see here momentarily. Once again, Moravis has got this. Uh, he's got this talisman of exile, man. He, yeah, he unupgraded, no grave locket, no ring. Just he did go for the the mana ring though. Last time that I saw him go for this, a relatively late mana ring that went for it eventually. 
Okay, there's the Mighty Blade. He is going for Shrunken. I do like that. Okay, so he probably picked up the Mighty Blade and the Warhammer then. Although... Yeah, so... Compared to Yolam here, he got dust too, though. Compared to Yolam, who likes to go with Savage Mace first, uh, Heimer instead is going to go for a Firebrand, it looks like. Uh, yeah. Maybe he likes to go with the Geometers a lot, I know. Yeah, he really does like the stats on both the Blessed Orb and the Geometers in general, so... Well, two things about that. A, Illusions are great for killing the Engineer Alti, but they have an Ophelia as well for that. And then B, it's an escape mechanism for the Keeper of the Forest. Hmm, all right, all right. The Hellflyer has been finished up here on Retrotag. So she's going to be able to drop silences on people's heads. Is dead? We're going to come in. Right, Grass will connect right here. There's the punch in. Wretched Hag just gets one shot by that auto attack. Rally going to try to get away. The Compel is not available. And Deadwood closing the distance. It picks up a second log. Going to have another Oak Bolt here and the Rotten Grass. Rally with a beautiful Compel. Going to get the TP off as well. And see ya. Beautiful play there by Krebson. Yeah, just last second, last second. I was like, is it going to come up? Is it going to come up? There it was. Not bad, not bad, but uh, yet another big kill on Flensmeister. 0-2-0. Zero, zero. Both kills with the hands of Moravis, who's done an extremely effective job of making Lions a bitch this game. Yeah, Wretched Hag actually had her Hellflower, too. Yeah, I... You almost wonder, his root land, you wonder if he could have just gotten off the, the Hellflower. The Hellflower, yeah. Trying to maybe, maybe just panic him a little bit, perhaps, but... Certainly makes sense that he should have been able to get the Hellfire off as, uh-oh. Monkey King going to be going in right here. Has the Shrunken Head available. There's the Monkey King coming on in. Dashing Strike. There's the Ophelia ult going to be going off as well. Monkey King going to pick up the double damage and the Shrunken Head going off. Seismic Slam onto Ophelia, but she's going to be okay for now. There's the turret. And Ophelia will go down right here. Electric Fence goes up as Glacius takes the fall as well. Artillery in some trouble. He goes down at the hands of Monkey King. Token Life brings him right back up, though. Rotten Grafts catching three players as Rally going to be coming on in. LRM doing so much damage. Keeper of the Forest in some trouble. He's gonna survive. No, he'll end up going down. Deadwood is down already as well. Oh. Elemental Void catching three right here. The auto attack damage to finish off the Monkey King. And, well, Wretched Hag gonna go down for the third time. Rally compels away. And that was big. Jeppens and Heimer teaming up to turn that fight around. Yeah, Jeppens arriving at the right moment there. And oh, they're not, not done. Like, oh, There's the Glacial Blast and the auto attacks from the LRM to finish off Mr. Rally. TT Esports really doing a good job of turning that fight around. Yeah, big, big, big turnaround. Uh, Token obviously being burned out by artillery there, but Jammer's Bane going to be up soon now. That Elemental Void, man, this came at the perfect time. Yeah, it did. It was nice. It was nice. I mean, everything was looking pretty good from Lions. Uh, had a decent route to set everything up. Monkey King going in there, doing some damage. And, uh, of course, the, the Rally and the Wretched Hag able to get in there as well, but... Didn't end up being enough. And was Wretched Hag's ult on cooldown? Because she certainly didn't use it. I don't believe so. I mean, she died and then she died again right now. So Flensmeister just sort of having a rough time here. Yeah, Lions Esports Club not quite looking as strong as they were uh, against Complexity just a couple days ago. Right. GE does have the invis, he does have the shrunken head as we saw Ooh, last fight. Deadwood popping uh, dust right here. Uh -oh. Not gonna catch anybody, but now he could be the one that's in trouble. Monkey King gonna go in. There's the vault. The shrunken head activated on Deadwood though. Monkey King might need to activate his as well. Rally gonna man up against Ophelia. There's the shrunken head from Monkey King. Root gonna come in catching four players. There's the keg going out as well. Electric fence goes down. Bat Blast gonna connect under two players. The artillery going to be the first and only one to go down from TTE so far. Capel connects under Tempest and down goes Jeppens. Now Rally turning his attention to Deadwood and Ophelia. Deadwood trying to get away. The Haunt going to be going out. There's the auto attacks onto Ophelia. The Sonar Scream to finish her off as well. And there you go, Lions. Finding the uh, opportunity. Taking a 3 for 0 trade. And they're going to finish it off with not one but two tower pushes. Yeah, TTS is lying themselves to get picked off uh, while the Elemental Void was down. Uh, picking up a fight around that we saw how, I mean, they had a token last fight, we saw how impactful the Elemental Void was into turning the tides of battle. Uh, the initiation for lines was stronger, they had the momentum going, just big plays turned it around. Uh, not having it up this fight and the initiation happening, it's like they were set to lose. Not to mention Bat Blast was needed before. Yep, made good use of it in that <laughs> fight though. Yeah, uh, 
I would have just been a lot more careful. I mean, obviously you're happy after winning that fight there, but it's not like artillery is at full form yet. It's not like he's just mowing people down. He's uh, still working on his build up, so it's uh, hit quite a bit harder before he's able to snowball and take over. Yeah, indeed. But Lion's taking that opportunity and saying, hey, if you guys are going to give us that, well, we'll take it. Bloodstone just finished up on Wretched Hag rather than starting the Mighty Blade toward a shrunken head right away. Figures to go for some armor, and I actually like that decision a lot against the Deadwood artillery combination. Yeah, it's always a very, very smooth build up. I'm mean, not to mention, people forget about the fact that when you die uh, with that Sackstone active, it. With a charge on it, you do get experience still in that area and gives you clear vision a little bit. Obviously, the clear vision usually does not come into too much effect, but also losing less gold than you die and respawning faster. There are a lot of other effects too besides just the stats. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, even the stats on it, the uh, armor, it's pretty much just a plus three armor. The cooldown and the use is actually longer than the cooldown is what you always point, what you always point out here. Right, and, so 8 uh, armor, 9 intelligence, 6 strength, 6 agility, and then it works on the allies, responding faster, uh, losing less gold, gaining experience where you die, and giving clear vision where you die, too. It's a pretty damn impressive item overall, and that, that 8 armor, though, probably one of the bigger things on that item against the Deadwood and the artillery. I like it. I like it a lot. For sure. For sure. Deadwood looking like he wants to have a go at this bottom lane. There's a Ward of Revelation being dropped down. Deadwood's about to walk into some people here. He needs to portal key on out of there. No, there's the compel coming in. And Deadwood had some serious trouble. The hunt coming in. And down goes Mr. Deadwood. So, Moravis, unfortunately, just getting caught out of position there. This is going to be another free tower for the most part, unless... Ooh, Hag coming up to actually kill the Ophelia minions. But Artillery... Uh, being real ballsy right now. Yeah, I would be extremely careful about any sort of initiation here. How's Hellborn? No shrunken head yet for Tempest. That could be very big. Of course, there's a root up, but uh, still, you catch the keeper and yeah, you're in a much better spot. But right now, they just have to play back. They don't have their their point man, so to speak, in this this Deadwood. So, you know, it, it was, they were invis. I mean, they spotted him out. He was obviously trying to be sneaky, get into a nice position there, but they were invis and Monkey King and the was it Monkey King plus was it Rally? Uh, I believe so. Actually, and then Ratchet Hack blinked across, I believe. Yeah. Either way, just put out the hurt. They did indeed. Monkey King, speaking to him with that shrunken head that he's had finished for a little while, went for the Soul's Bulwark next and uh, now has 2,100 gold saved up. And look at that. A Monkey King bottling a haste rune. Never seen that before. <laughs> haste and Monkey King. He's already slippery enough with that haste rune. Just... Holy oh, they're looking for Deadwood here in the middle lane. Keep the force going to go in. There's the root catching him. Shrunken Head going to break it, though. In comes the vault. There's the Willowmaker going out on to keep the force. Tempest coming in with the four-man elemental void. No interrupts going to be coming. There's the keg. The LRM doing so much damage. My D4 Club is in trouble right here. Rally going to be going down as well as keeping the force. Wretched Hag as well. Leon Black with a hat trick so far. Monkey King going to turn around man up. Gets the kill on the Glacius in addition to Deadwood. But... Looks like Engineer going to be the only one to get out of there alive. Seal Kid dropped the electric fence and then said, All right, guys, I've done my job. I'm out of here. <laughs> see ya. Yeah, I'll, uh, now it's See ya, kid. Up. Yeah, <laughs> see ya. Now, you see, they, they use the keeper route. So that was Tempest's sign. Hey, I can jump in right here. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be a big ulti. Yep. Uh, even a couple seconds that alone set up the artillery barrage onto everyone that was getting pulled together. Two more additional seconds of stun. The LRM coming out. Uh, wiping everybody out. It was big in the turnaround that TT Esports needed here at 31 minutes into the game. The score tied up at 12 and 12, and TT Esports taking a 3,000 gold lead, experience lead, pretty much negligible. All right, at this point, okay, I like to point out before they don't have Elemental Void up. Is this a point where Alliance tries to make something? And as this game goes later and later, I mean. Artillery's scary, man. He really does the scale like an absolute monster. He, he does. It's it's actually absurd how strong that hero gets with items just because of that LRM and uh, the bunker down. Both have kind of scaling effect when you're talking about 35 base damage. And he just does so well with that agility. And um, yeah, it's it's. I'm yes. liking it, man. I'm liking the hero. Maintain safe positioning during the battles. 
Yeah. And with a hero that doesn't necessarily have the most inherent mobility, no flash of darkness like the Wretched Hag or anything like that, no tree grapple or the blazing flight coming out of Draconis, um, just having that positioning is just so, so crucial. Middle lane, though, artillery. Mm, there's a lot of Legion players here, but not looking to go in. Rally did pick up that portal key. Um, but uh, so far, I mean, I don't think we've seen him use it really too much. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I love the portal key pickup on Rally. It's a uh, definite seal of approval coming out from me, and Monkey King already had the bulwark, so it sort of made this decision easier. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of Monkey King, he does pick up another ring mail here. Uh, now about 200 gold off of finishing up the shrunken head. Demorlacking like Roar comes in. Two-man compel as well. Seismic Slam not going to go off. Gets interrupted. Wallmaker going out onto Steel Kid. Root comes in onto four. Shrunken head activated on Deadwood. There's the Seismic Slam once again. Not going to be going off still. And Rally going to go down before he gets the Seismic Slam off. Rally and Ophelia, the only two to go down so far. Haunt's getting in a little bit of trouble. Water Revelation goes down. There's the artillery brush. The LRM going to be coming in as well. There's the keg onto artillery, though. The Sonar Scream doing a lot of damage to him, but artillery going to turn around and just man on up. Monkey King going to walk right into him, though, trying to get away. And Seal Kid going to walk into a rotten grass. Gets out unscathed. Monkey King going to try to man up and get the kill here and will get the kill onto artillery. Now will Super KG be able to get out of there? Absolutely not. He goes down. Deadwood taken out by Wretched Hag and Engineer ends up being a three for three exchange. Damn, Emperor, this game is even. Yeah, uh, Elemental Void was not used that fight, though. Was it up? Uh, oh. it, I think it just came up. Right? Exactly. I'm oh, okay. It was not used okay. That fight, so that's something to keep in mind. Like, yeah, that was an even fight. Rally didn't get a seismic slam off. I believe you can use it while you're in ice imprisonment. It looked like he was in range. Uh, uh, I didn't see him. I don't know. You definitely can use it, but I don't think he was in range when he was in prison. Yeah, to me, it looked like it was at the peak of range. I'm sure he was trying it out. It probably was just out of range. I know it is pretty small. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you saw him like trying to wind it up like three or four times. There. Yeah. It's not finding that window. Yeah, the Hellborn team doing a fantastic job of making sure that he was not able to get that off. But Flensmeister actually farming quite well after finishing up that sacrificial stone just what seemed like a couple of minutes ago. He just finished up his shrunken head as well. Looking good for him. Right. Artillery, uh, despite the death, though, not slowing down. 4,300 extra gold saved up, getting really close to what I believe will be a savage maze. Yeah, a ton of gold saved up there. And uh, speaking of uh, people that are having good games here, Seal Kid sitting on 200 GPM on the solo support engineer. Just picked up a bound die in addition to his major totem. Actually, very similar items to what Glacius has on the other side of the map, but... Seal Kid sitting on 0, 1, and 12. I mean, uh, pretty damn nice <laughs> score here for our engineer player. Yeah, damn. Tied with least amount of deaths along with that Tempest, but he's playing primary support. Uh, 1,400 health right now, level 13. Just doing a great job. He's tankier than the Monkey King. No, Monkey King has a ton of armor. <laughs> Holy crap. 29 armor on the Monkey King without Keeper armor. Yeah, and he has and, agility. <laughs> and no... Uh, sacrificial stone either so he's going to get up to 44 armor with those two it's true that's going to be uh, kind of crazy ring of the teacher and ring of the teacher yep speaking of the ring of the teacher abyssal skull has been picked up for a while on ophelia might use that to try to go for a, a congor here in just right. one moment and she's also making her way toward a staff of the masters don't know exactly how far along she is with that but uh, she's had that glowstone for about nine minutes now Interesting. Engineer, ooh, not gonna go down. Glacius actually picking up the double damage there, rather than uh, putting the artillery into the dangerous position. Allowed Leon Black to go grab it. Said, "Hey, you are not worth as much as me right now. Go get this." He's got the Savage Mace Gold with this wave. So, yep. I, okay, this is gonna be big for this next fight. Unless they manage to burst down artillery, he is gonna be running train. And, I mean, he is pretty squishy still. Only 1,800 life uh, if they can break that Null Stone. Yeah, he, he is squishy, <coughs> but once again, his long attack range. He has to be out of position to get caught. And staying yeah. in the back with the artillery barrage, with his teammates, with the Deadwood and the Tempest to cover him as well. Tempest now having a shrunken head of his own, so if he sees the, the Keeper root come out, that's his sign. That's true, that's true. And now Ophelia going to be in the front lines, activates the Plated Greaves here. Artillery and Deadwood going to be taking turns... Kiting around the Congor, 
Legion team heading over though in Hellborn backs the hell on up real quick. There's the Savage Race pickup. Nice. Nice indeed. Super KGE. You got six and three right now. Six, seven, and then looks like a trial. Two, four, five. Taking a look at my other player here, Jeffins. Three, one, and seven. So they're doing good. They're doing good. Jeffin, they're they're all having good games, man. You know who else is having a good game? Seal Kid. Ugh. Already talked about this, but I forgot that he was on my, my fantasy roster. He is on your fantasy roster? Yeah. I thought I was going to grab him. You were, break. but you didn't screw me over, and I appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. Man, that, it got fierce yesterday, man. I'm not even going there. You're not, you're not even going there? I'm just saying, like, I was a little bit worried that friendships were going to be broken. They were. <laughs> That's why I'm not going there. Oh, wow. It's purely professional, and then... After today, after tomorrow, we can call it. I don't know, man. Dude, Sam was talking a lot of crap to me after after the cast. Kong does go down here by the Hellborn team. And the uh, Legion team, a little bit too afraid to engage with that Elemental Void and available. Well, uh, speaking about Sam talking crap, Ale was on the brink of defeat. 20,000 gold in experience now. Uh oh, Wretched Hag in some trouble right here. Activates the shrunken head. Gets Willowmaker, but she's still going to be able to blink on out of there and try to get away. Will get the TP on out and be just fine. Yeah, uh, great escape there by Flens. And, okay, I was talking about, once again, going back to the important part of this, Sam's fantasy draft. He had Cookies and Mookies on the same team. Uh, cookies did want to be picked up by him, and... Uh, they delivered, man. They were 20k golden experience down against uh, Team Pika. Moon Queen, played by King Plato, did prevail. Interesting, interesting. Well, congratulations to AL. They move on to play Complexity Gaming, which uh, I believe, I think B-Kid's going to be streaming that once again over at twitch.tv slash B-Kid's2, B-Kid-S2. So, uh, very fun, very fun series, I'm sure, between those two teams. As Monkey King flipping around. What? I... Emperor? Are you, are you serious? I am? No, I mean... Oh, Refresher just picked up by Keeper. He's going all in. They're about he to is. do this, Emp, and then you got to tell me what you're talking about. I'm Savage Mace. Playing again. Savage Mace right there. Uh, gonna be able to finish off the tower and Monkey King not able to get the full initiation off. Mookies is no longer playing again? Yeah, yeah, he played the first set and he had to go again. I'm not... Oh, uh, that sucks. Yeah. Oh, looks like Rally gonna go in right there. Onto Artillery! There's the Rotten Grass gonna be going in. There's the Root catching five. Elemental Void comes in. Second Root gonna interrupt the Elemental Void. Deadwood in a lot of trouble. Rally gonna try to get out of there. Artillery will go down, but Rally drops as well. Token Life gonna bring Artillery right back up and he is on the high ground. They can't get to him. Monkey King gonna go down. Beautiful position and coming in from artillery. LRM locking down engineer. Engineer gonna drop pound die, hits the ground. And this is going to be an easy set of racks. Artillery being played by Cheese Helmet with the perfect positioning. Uh, Emperor, was, I don't even know, man. I don't even that, know. That's abuse, man. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah, I know, that's like oh, that's like borderline exploits, man. <laughs> that's awesome. I don't even know what to think of that. That was awesome though. <laughs> oh god. Well, just well, like that. By Chief's helmet, uh, bringing out the artillery he has. You know, that, that was that was the Restoration Stone Keeper. That was the Restoration Stone Keeper. So yep. There was two, two alties there, the double set of racks. Uh, 5,500 gold. I, I don't know. I don't either. Wretched Hag trying to get away. Gonna get hit by a rotten grasp or gonna get cornered right here. Willowmaker gonna be going out as Wretched Hag gets the back blast off just before dying. Deadwood does end up going down, but look at Keeper of the Force get absolutely melted by artillery. Rally comes on in. There's the Cabell. Seismic slam the auto attack damage as well. There's the keg missing from Silken. Silken, no! Wretched Hag buying back right now. And it looks like artillery going to be sent home. He does get ported on out. Glacier's going to get out of there as well. Tempest going to be equally as lucky. Ophelia, not so much. And she goes down. Lions Esports Club does defend their last set of racks. Moravis bought back, and he's coming back in. I don't know. A little bit of rage back there, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that fight pretty much established the 
the tone of the rest of the game here. We got a Restoration Stone uh, now picked up by Tempest, so making that battle with Keeper that much more powerful now that he can sort of respond to the double ultimates. Frostwolf Skull picked up by the artillery. Jeez. Holy moly. <laughs> uh, well, he's hitting for 300 damage right now relatively quick. One and a half attacks per second. But, of course, uh, the big thing there, just, just how tanky he is. 2,700 life. Uh, has a healthy amount of armor as well. It's at about 20. And he's going to be so hard to bring down. Yes, he is. He is uh, well, and look at the kiting potential now. Uh, or the anti-kite, I should say, coming out. The Frost Wolf Skull. The Fragmentation Shells. Just no, no good. And look what he's standing next to right now. It's nothing. Really? It's nothing. It's not important. It's, it's not irrelevant. Important. No, it's irrelevant. And shout out to Greena again, right? Emperor, can you bring me an elephant? I, I, that that can happen for for Vegas. Maybe. Oh man, we should bet on your elephant. What do you mean? We, sh if if I win oh. some kind of bet, I take your elephant and I burn it. No. Okay. <laughs> that's that's not <laughs> happening. We got double damage under our <laughs> artillery. That's, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Wow, Emperor. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting it on the line. No, absolutely not. But Does your elephant have a name? It's Cthulophon, man. It's that it's Cthulophon. It's with got a, a name. With a mustache? Those are tentacles. Mustache Thulophon? Okay, look, we have Frostal Skull sitting here on artillery <laughs> seeking face, 520 damage. Yeah, he's this crushing like everything. It's... Lions Esports Club coming from behind, but they're split up. TP's going to be used right now, but the melee racks are going to be dropping so quick. Rally gets stunned immediately. Shrunken Head goes out onto Deadwood, and he gets the Willowmaker off. Rally gets disintegrated. Wretched Hag going to get caught in the Elemental Void. Monkey King in there as well. Interrupted. There's the second one, though, and Keeper the Force not able to interrupt that one. TT Esports going to come out victorious in Game 1. And Lions Esports Club, your Sound Blaster Heroes League runner-ups, now in a pretty damn precarious situation. Yeah, definitely put on the back foot there. You know, all this time I've seen TTS playing, I'm like, they're not running artillery, they're not running artillery, they're not running artillery. Uh, they, they handed it off to Heimer this game, a.k.a. Cheese Helmet, and he delivered. He certainly did. Now, I, uh, well, what's up? Well, I was going to say, if I had to give... I had to give MP MVP status, though, to TTS that game. Who would you say? <sighs> Honestly, I'm kind of feeling Jepins. I was going to say, Jepins, Jepins he or delivered Chisel in the laning phase, had some big ultimates. Uh, yeah. Really he, did set the pace. He had some really big ultimates, and even not just the ultimates, but he was just highly mobile, ended up being 6-1-12, and 12, involved in a ton of hero kills, using the Glacial Blast, and like you said, uh, his laning phase, he ended up doing extremely well against the Wretched Hag. Not something that we see too often. So, yeah, I think i got to give it to Jepins. Yeah, I would agree. All right, guys. Well, that was indeed game one in this best of three series between these two teams. Lions Esports Club, like I just said, uh, two days ago, took second place in the Sound Blaster Heroes League, taking it to a full best of five against Complexity Gaming. Three days ago, defeated Stay Green. Four days ago, defeated Q Squad. I, these guys, they've been looking really, really good lately. But TT Esports, I mean, they just looked extremely strong in that game. Emp, can Lions bring this back and force game three? Or is TT Esports maybe having a little bit of a resurgence here? Well, that game was back and forth, back and forth. I think it's definitely, I wouldn't even give it above 50-50 odds. This match looks very, very even. TTS came strong today. Uh, we'll see how they perform in game two. I, I've i said TTS is a very powerful team, but they are very inconsistent so far. A uh, little bit yeah. pigeonholed sometimes by lineups uh, is some of the criticism that they often get. Yeah, well, I mean, in this lineup, they, they definitely tried something different here with the Suicide Tempest that we don't see very often, and... They looked good doing it, man. So they did. They I, did. I'm excited for game number two, and I know that uh, Leon Black is looking to prove me wrong, saying that I didn't think that TTE Sports was going to get too deep into this one. And, uh, well, 
Leon, I would love to be proved wrong here with a win over Lions. So we're going to go ahead and get into game two here momentarily, guys. This is Cold Cast on Hauntcast with me, your casting host, Beef and Emperor. And of course, a big thank you to the Complexity Gaming Organization for all their support of Cold Cast, as well as to the guys over at Hauntcast for allowing us to be here today. And to all the Cole sponsors, Sound Blaster, New Egg, QPad, PNY, Origin, G8 Brand, Twitch. Those guys are awesome. We're going to be right back with some more Heroes of New Earth here in Haunt Tour. Cycle ain't diamond. Beef and Emperor, Coldcast on Hauntcast, Lions and TTEs, Game 2, coming up next. <laughs> 